Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're looking at GDevelop 5, specifically Beta 54, which was just released. Now, I don't know if I'm screwing that up, if it's Beta 5.4 or whatever, their naming convention it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but it does seem to be sequential, and the last number was 54, so let's go with that. And I don't normally cover uh, beta releases like this, but this one has a major change to GDevelop 5 that will really change the way people work with it. It'll make people a lot more productive. So I am doing this video showcasing that new functionality. If you've never heard of it, GDevelop is an open source visual uh, codeless game creator. Now you can get behind the scenes and you can create and extend the code yourself, but you don't have to. So this guy is completely free and completely open source. Now if you're interested in learning more, I'm not getting into a lot more details there because I've actually already done a video on it back, uh, oh this is a month or two ago. Uh, September 24th. As you can see, I'm being kind of lazy and reusing my graphics. <laughs> but anyways, uh, if you want a good idea of exactly what GDevelop is all about, I will toss that link down below. You can learn a bit more about GDevelop. But what we're specifically looking at is Beta 54. What is in this release? Now, I will toss this link down below. and We will go through the new features in a second. But instead, I'm going to showcase to you the two probably biggest ones. So here we are. I've downloaded Beta 54. It's installed. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and create a new project like so. And we'll create an empty game game. And what I want to do here, I'll create a scene. And then within our scene, so we're editing our scene now, uh, I'm done with you for now, we will go ahead and create an object for our scene. I'm just going to create a sprite, we'll call it eh, new object works for me, we'll add an animation to it, we'll use the built in editor, and we will make this incredibly awesome slime sprite. So we're good to go. We just created our sprite, it is ready for use in the world. We can drag and drop it into the world. So there we go. We have a sprite in the world and notice where it is. Well, the new functionality, what it allows us to do basically is build functions into extensions. And these can be shared with other developers or you can use them yourself. So essentially, if you've used any programming language, you know what a function is and you know how fundamental they are to a programming language. This allows us to create reusable, slottable code. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and create a function for this guy that will basically just center whichever object we pass in or whichever sprite. We'll make it sprite specific, but you could make it object specific if you wished. So now that that guy is there, our event scenes here, we're going to come back to that after all. We're going to come down here. And what I want to do is drop into the functions extensions tab. Now, I want to talk to the people behind this one. Uh, your name and convention is a little confusing here. So right now you've got this functions and extensions. And technically what's over here are your extensions or your collections of functions. So this add a function, click to add a function is a little confusing. So I just created my new extension. Uh, you should really change that to cl click to add new module or new extension or something to that effect, but we'll say this, my functions. So I've renamed it over there. And now that we've got that guy going on, so what I what I did intrinsically when I first did this, or intuitively when I did first did this, it's like, oh, I just created my new functions collection. Let's add a function to it. And that's not actually how it goes. So saying there are no events here, blah, blah, blah. So now we're in the my functions guy. We'll close this down here. So this is where you create your collection of functions. So this is basically an extension called my functions that I could share my functions with someone else. So if this was drawing functions, I could have a bunch of compatible drawing functions over here. Now, one thing I did forget to point out before moving into this section, to enable all of this, you actually have to turn it on. So go to File, My Preferences, and make sure Activate Event Functions Alpha, please report bugs. Make sure that that is ticked on or you can't actually use this functionality, pun not intended. All right, so we've created our uh, extension over here. Now we're going to go ahead and add a function to it. So just click it once and then we will rename that guy and we'll just call it Center. And uh, yep, I think that's all I need to do. So now that we've selected it, it brings you up over here. So now what we're gonna do, this is gonna create the action. So this is the name that is gonna be shown in, shown in the editor description. And then here, this is gonna be shown as the line in the editor. I'll actually come back to this. So we'll leave this alone for now. But here you see, there are no parameters for this function. We can go ahead and add a parameter. So scale that down a bit. We'll add a parameter in here. So the parameter name is sprite to center. And then we could set it, we could make it, we could leave it as an object. Um, or we could set specifically as a number or a string. So we'll go with objects and then we can pick the type of object. So in this case, we're going to limit this function just working with or accepting sprites. So there's, it's going to take the sprite to center in. Um, here, fill this one out, it's important, or you're not gonna find it later. Okay, so center sprite 
to screen. Okay, so we have our function defined. Now we just need to go ahead, come on up here and add an event. So this is any condition, I'm fine with our, we don't need a condition at all, so this will always run. So we're gonna add an action to it and we're just gonna say uh, position, uh, put position of an object. And then you see here, we've got our, uh, the parameter that was passed into this function is automatically available for us, so right there. And then we're gonna go ahead and pick um, scene window width. That's really annoying, by the way, and I don't know why it does that. But another bit of feedback I would give is after using a function, it always pops up a meaningless dialog, which is kind of annoying. All right, so what this is basically going to do is take this object and move it to half the screen, half the height. In other words, centered-ish. Um, and we'll go ahead and click OK on that. So we now have this uh, function that we just created. Now, the cool thing is we could take this entire extension of my functions and reuse it in other projects, or we can share it with other developers. So you can see how this is opening up a whole new world of configurability for end users. It does make things a lot more useful overall. And now let's head on back over to our scene. So you'll You'll see right here there are no events in this scene so we need to add something so add an empty event um, we'll come down here to scene and at the beginning of the scene so this is going to be called when our scene is first created and what we will do is automatically center our object so what you do is scroll down here you'll look on your left you will find your extension there open it up and you will see all of your functions within the extension like so and there you see there center selected sprite uh, we'll go ahead and pick our sprite object. So that is the uh, the name of our object in the scene. I, I'm not naming things particularly well, but there you see in our new scene, we now have, and you see this, see how it's kind of empty? It's, it's right, it's just since that's not specified, if you don't specify this sentence right here, then you get nothing there and it's very, very confusing. So what you wanna do is come back here and say um, center, sprite to screen, all right? And then we head back over here and you'll immediately see that shows up there. Now, the cool thing is if you've got multiple parameters and you want to say center blah to blah, uh, what you do is say, instead of center sprite, I can say center sprite and I can do underscore param one underscore to screen. And then now we head on back over here and you will see I made an error. Is it case sensitive? It's either that or plural. All right, let's go with plural. All right, just a second. Oops, my bad. It's very case sensitive. So it's all caps like that, which makes sense because it looks like a macro. So there you see, and it will automatically fill in the value of the parameter you passed in right there. So this function ability, so now if we go ahead and run our scene, you will see, poof, we are centered. Now we're not really centered because our pivot point isn't the center of our sprite, so we're offset a little bit. But you see how you can um, now create reusable, shareable code. And it's callable, so if I wanted to call it again, it's easily available here wherever I need to call or evoke that function. So it's really going to change the way you structure your GDevelop code. Now another feature of this particular release that's kind of cool is what they've added to audio. So come down here to audio, and you saw earlier when I used the pixel editor to create my game sprite, Excuse me. Well, they're doing the same thing now with audio. So I can come down here and say, play a sound. And we can go here and I am in the sound. So I could select my sound normally right here. But now what instead we could do is click this little button right here and then pick create a new sound like this. And it automatically brings up this guy and it's a random sound generator. It's, it's uh, you saw the name of it right there. It's JYSFX or something like that. And you can just randomize it to get kind of those 8-bitty kind of sounds. So if you wanted a coin sound or an explosion sound, there you go. And you can tweak the values until you get a sound effect you want. And then once you're happy with your sound effect, we can call it my SFX. And then we can save that. 
and you see it is now usable in the world. We can repeat it or not repeat it and done. So now you've got the ability to create these sound effects directly from the action editor, which is kind of cool new functionality. And those are the two new biggies. Definitely the function, uh, the extensions and function system is hands down the biggest new change in this particular release, but both those are going to be huge quality of life changes. So here we are back at the release notes for beta 54, and you can see we just covered off Functions are now in, and you know how to use them because I just showed you how to use them. Uh, JSFX, uh, the sound effect generator that I just showcased, was just integrated directly inside of the engine. And I, I love this stuff. I love and integrating editors directly in, especially for a beginner-focused game engine. Now, there's no reason why you have to use those editors. You can use you know, your sound effect or your graphics package of choice. But if you're just starting out and you don't have experience finding out what sound effect package to use or what... Uh, image editor to use, or it's cool having them just all in one place. So I, I really applaud that change. And then we got a couple quality of life improvements. Objects can be positioned on the scene, dragging and dropping them from the list of objects to the scene. Uh, three new examples have been added, JavaScript annotations, um, add option to scan for new image resource to remove unused images in the resource editor, hold alt while moving an object to ignore the grid, edit object and delete objects in context menu on scene editor, performance improvements in the IDE, added word wrapping to text objects, snap position to objects in uh, to the grid when inserted, add event, add sub event and add other options in context menu in the event sheets, add option to customize particle rotation speed and add button to rotate the selected instances in the scene editor. And then a number of bug fixes as you can see below. Of course I will, actually I'm gonna be doing a summary link of all this stuff so I'll toss that down below to game from scratch so if you want to learn any more about all of this release it will all be there um and then, of course, if you are interested in learning more specifically about how functions work, when we covered it, we pretty much went through pretty step by step of what you need to do. But they have done a wiki update already documentation on using this stuff. And it's impressive to see. One of those things that open source projects normally kind of suck at is documentation. So it's nice to see them taking documentation and examples seriously. It's nice to see them responding to their community's feedback. And I think GDevelop 5 is going to be a great 2D package. And again, it's one of those ones that I'm thinking about doing a, my first game type 2 tutorial using gdevelop5 let me know if you guys are interested all right so that is gdevelop5 beta 54 now i'm not going to cover all of the betas but they're actually not that that common so if i come down here and we look at releases you'll see the last one so beta 54 is the current release and 52 was back september 11th uh august 30th so you see sometimes a beta release is just you know we added an example, changed this and that. This one, they added completely new functionality that changed the way you use GDevelop 5, and thus I did a video on it. Let me know if you want to see more coverage or less coverage of GDevelop 5. Let me know if you're interested in that tutorial if I get some time or not. Uh, okay, that's it for now. Um, interested in hearing what you say. See you all later. Goodbye.